Good evening, I'm Pastor Steve Putti Marshall, and I welcome you to this service on Holy Thursday. Thank you for joining us. I'll invite you in a little while to join in the foot washing. So you may wanna have a basin and um, some warm water and a pitcher and a towel close by. You can join in this ritual, whether you are in social isolation from one another or you have someone there with you. I invite you to join with me now in the opening prayer. Let us pray. O Prince of Peace, O friends of sinners, we praise you and give you thanks because you laid aside your power as garment and took upon yourself the form of a slave. You became obedient unto death, even death on the cross. You allowed yourself to be born, to die in our place, You allowed your own feet to be anointed for death. You allowed a sinner to wash your feet with her tears. For God chose what is low and despised in the world to bring to nothing things that are. Therefore, with the woman who gave you birth, with the women who anointed you for death, with the woman who worshiped you with her tears, and with all our fellow sinners who have loved and served you from that time till now, we praise you, Lord Jesus. O eternal Father, Blessed is our brother Jesus, who on that night before Passover rose from the supper, laid aside his garments, took a towel and poured water and washed his disciples' feet, saying to them, If I, your teacher and Lord, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. If you know these things, blessed are you if you do them. So come now, mighty Spirit of God, wash us and make us one body in Christ, that as we are bound together in this act of love, we may no longer be in bondage to the principalities and powers that enslave creation, but may know your liberating peace, such as the world cannot give. Amen. Our first reading tonight is Psalm 116, verses 1 to 2 and 12 to 19. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. Lord, I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. 
I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. 1 Corinthians 11, 23-26 For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Tonight is Holy Thursday. Tonight is a very sacred night in the Christian church. At the Last Supper, in the Gospel of John, we read about the foot washing of the disciples. In the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the most important event at the Last Supper is Holy Communion, the sharing of bread and wine. But in the Gospel of John, the most sacred event of the Last Supper is the foot washing. There is no Holy Communion during the Last Supper in the Gospel of John. In the Gospel of John, the foot washing is the final symbolic act that Jesus did with his disciples at the Last Supper. Tonight, I'd like to reenact for you the foot washing as an example of what Jesus did at the Last Supper, as recorded in the Gospel of John. The Gospel lesson for Monday, Thursday is in John 13. This, fo this foot washing is being reenacted tonight in many different settings throughout the world. In the Greek Orthodox Church, the Archbishop is washing the feet of 12 poor people. In Rome tonight, the Pope is washing the feet of 12 of his priests. Historically on this night, Queen Mother Elizabeth washed the feet of 12 of her subjects to remind English citizens and herself that the queen was to be a servant of the people. As the disciples were eating their last meal together, they started to argue among themselves, who was the greatest? Perplexed by their conversation, Jesus stu stood up. The disciples wondered what was Jesus was doing. Jesus took off his outer garment, which is similar to the alb that I'm wearing tonight, and he took a towel and wrapped it around his waist. The towel was most likely the towel of a servant who would normally wash the feet of the disciples as they entered the room. Jesus took the towel and wrapped it around his waist, and then he took a pitcher of water and poured it into a bowl. Jesus then proceeded to wash the disciples' feet one by one. The disciples who had been arguing about who was the greatest became very quiet, very quiet. No one spoke a word. Then Jesus came to Simon Peter, and Peter asked, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? And Jesus answered, Yes, Simon, I'm going to wash your feet. Simon replies, Never, Lord. You're not going to wash me. It's not right for a master to wash the feet of his disciple." And Jesus said to Simon, If I cannot wash you and make you clean, you cannot truly be my follower. Simon begged, Lord, wash all of me. Wash my hands, my legs, my arms. Wash all of me that I might be truly clean and be your disciple. Jesus washed the feet of Simon. 
I invite you now to take part in this foot washing in any way that is possible for you. Perhaps you're by yourself, so you can wash your own feet. If you're with more than one person, take time to wash another's feet. I will read scripture and then we'll play music to provide time for you to move through this foot washing. You can always press pause on the video if you need more time. We'll come back together in a few moments after this is over. So let us hear the scripture from Philippians 2, 5 through 11. For Christ did not count equally with God a thing to be grasped, but Christ humbled himself, taking the form of a servant. He was humble, humble and obedient unto death. A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you. This is my new mandate, my new commandment, that you love one another. Go ahead and now participate in this ritual of foot washing. So how was that experience for you? Do you feel connected to the acts of Jesus as he washed his disciples' feet? Did you feel connected to the person you were washing their feet? Uh, 
or even feel connected closer to God in this moment. We're not so much washing each other's feet today uh, in our world, but we are washing our hands quite a bit. And in a lot of ways, I think that is the way that we're keeping our faith. By washing our hands and doing it faithfully, we're serving one another through that action. We are serving each other so that we will protect each other's health in all that we do and all the actions that we take. And so each time you wash your hands, you might think of this moment in which Jesus washes his disciples' feet and remember that he came to serve and calls us to serve as well. I think of that expression of getting your hands dirty. And that really means more than just digging in the dirt. It means really plowing into uh, an effort to help others, to really get involved in the project, to really invest of yourself into it. And right now we're a little off balance in our lives. We're, we're not able to do the usual routines that we have. We're not able to be in this wonderful sanctuary together to worship. All of those kinds of things have been put on hold. And so we are being challenged to how we can still get our hands dirty, invest in the care for others. And I know that there are some who are out there already doing this. And um, I talked to one member who is delivering meals to those who are shut in and taking precautions, of course, to make sure she is safe. I know that there's people who are collecting food donations for those who are able to um, who, who need food, who are hungry on the streets. There are so many ways that people are helping, and sometimes we don't hear about that in the news, but it is their way of living out their faith in Jesus and making a contribution in ways that may be new to them. Just learning how to be on Zoom is an incredible effort sometimes for some of us. So we are appreciative of all of that because it is us investing ourselves into making the world a more healthy and well place. We also get our hands dirty when we pray for one another. We invest of our time and energy and our thoughts into loving those who we can't be with through our prayer. So I invite you to continue praying for those that we need to lift up. Especially think of the families who have lost loved ones during this crisis. Not just here in California, not just here in the United States, but around the world. The statistics are sometimes depressing and staggering. And we know that at this time, as we prepare for Easter, that Jesus dealt with issues of life and death as well. And so we look to him in this time to lift us up, to help wash away all that keeps us from digging in, investing of ourselves to care for the world in new and creative ways. I look forward to hearing how you are working in the world right now, even as you keep your hands washed to care for those as, and as much as you stand away from others so that you keep proper distance and that you're sheltering in place, all of these things that we do in an order to care for others. And I, I am grateful for that care that you have blessed others with in this time. And may God continue to inspire us so that we might continue to help the world with all our heart, with all our minds, with all that we are able to give. And so I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank you for being with us in worship today and want to invite you to make a special offering tonight to support the work of the church. You could send a check through the mail to the church office 
or use the link provided to make a virtual contribution. Thank you for your uh, for continued support during these difficult times. We appreciate your support. Let us now pray this prayer of dedication. Loving God, you take good care of us in more ways than we know. Your personal love is reflected in the kindness of Jesus, who washed the feet of his disciples. May our congregation show your love to one another and to our neighbors through practical deeds of mercy. Make us willing to get our hands dirty in assisting others. Help us to discover joy in giving our time and money. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, who came not to be served, but to serve. Amen. And now may God continue to bless you and keep you. And I pray this in the name of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. Amen.